Well, welcome to Ford and welcome to the desk drive. I'm Walt Collins. Today is our chance to have a bit of a look behind the scenes at the new FX4 Max from Ford. It is an amazing machine. It is your chance to meet the engineer behind the project and also to ask questions. If you have any concerns, any queries or genuine questions, keep them nice, keep them respectful then just tap them into the comments below. Now, I have a list of questions here I've made myself and from some Instagram followers too, but really this is over to you guys. So get those questions coming in. Also, while you're in the comments, at any point you can type FX4 Max brochure, price or test drive, and our team of people behind the scenes, they're working away, will endeavor to get back to you as soon as they can with that information or a link to download the brochure. So let's go and meet the ruggiest beast the rugged beast itself, and have a bit of a look at this machine as well. We'll also meet Martin, who is the engineer. Here he is, mate. Good to meet you. How you doing? Hey, well. Good. Nice to meet you. So mate. alive. This is it, mate. We've been on a test drive last week. What is it like being an engineer at Ford and being responsible for the invention of this beast? Yeah. So well, uh, obviously, you know, working for Ford is a, is a great privilege, and you know, it's being involved in a program like this, uh, working with a team based in you know, Geelong here in uh, Melbourne. And you know, it's just been awesome being able to go through the development phase and actually working on this, this beast like you said it is. Um, <laughs> so no, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, look, it's an amazing vehicle. I mean, I've had a look around this. I've had a drive of it myself. Um, you're a four wheel driver, you were telling me. So you're not just sitting there in an office. You like to get out on the road. Is there a bit of personal inspiration that's come off the back of that that's gone into <laughs> this machine, you reckon? Well, I, I think I'm talking not only for myself, but for a bunch of guys back in the office at the moment. You know, I think we, we try and build the best uh, off-road vehicle for ourselves so we yeah. can go and play with it afterwards. And I think this is, you know, what we've come up with. And <laughs> I think it's, it's a, it's, we'll, and we'll go through it and we'll, we'll yeah. talk a bit more about it, but it's come out really good. We'll do a couple of laps of the car, I reckon. I've got a list of questions here and people are going to ask questions as well. But should we start at the front and kind of make our way around a little bit? Because the first thing I notice, of course, we've got the FORD grill here which just brings this car into a whole different category. So talk us through what's, what's happened at the front of the car. Yeah, so obviously, um, I mean, if you look at the vehicle, you know, if you look at the truck, it's, it's got a bold athletic look. Um, and I think, you know, the, the, the Ford grille, um, that's standard yeah. um, on the FX4 Max variant, you just brings that out, right? So it just creates that appearance. It just appearance. looks, yeah. it looks good, doesn't it? It yeah. looks aggressive. It looks like an angry animal that just wants to get out on the open road, much like uh, yourself. <laughs> there, mate. Talk to us about the insets and things. We've got lots of stuff going up here, I've noticed as well. Yeah, so we've got all these um, accents, clearance, uh, clear coloring accents throughout the vehicle. Um, you, and once we walk around, you'll see that sort of shine through, um, which is obviously unique to the um, FX4 Max, you know, like on the, on the spotlights here at the bottom, uh, the fog lamps and things like that. Um, again, all part of, you know, the vehicle. Um, so obviously, it's not just an appearance pack, and I think that's what we, you know, we would try to make sure we deliver something to the customer that brings up the capability yeah. um, of, of the truck. And, and so it's not only an appearance pack, it's an actual a proper off-road beast. Some may argue it's called a ute, you know, not a truck. Listen, I, I, I think for me, it's the idea that you've enjoyed, you've engineered this vehicle to, to really just be an off-road vehicle as well. So you can leave the building site on a Friday afternoon, collect your partner and go hit the desert, hit the dirt tracks. I mean, this is what it's made for, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know, like you say, take your, your wife or your girlfriend out Friday night, Saturday, take it off-road, Sunday off-road. And then in the week, you know, hitch your trailer with uh, whatever you're towing around um, and get the job done in the week. So, yeah, this is this is the truck for that. Should we wander around, have a little look? I'm keen to see some of the stuff that you've added on to here as well. So the first thing I notice, of course, is the is the tires and these wheels. These got some, um, what are they called? The, the fenders? Fender lip moldings, yeah. yep. Talk so to me what's going on here. So I'll talk you a bit through it. So what we've done is we've carried over um, the 17-inch wheel, but it's completely new design in, in the grey colour. Um, and we've actually given a bit of offset um, to give the vehicle a bit of a wider stance. So you've got a track width increase of about 26 millimeter um, across the front and the rear. Um, and what we've done is we've added um, these, these big uh, BFG all-terrain tyres, KO2s, um, yeah. specifically selected for this vehicle um, because of its off-road capability. And again, that just helps get the vehicle increase the vehicle's off-road capability. So right? straight out of the showroom and onto the, onto the open road, yeah. like we said, because normally this is all aftermarket stuff, so you have to go and take it somewhere to get some tyres, but you just made this now as part of it. Correct. Which that's, is pretty cool, I reckon. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, so obviously with the wheel offset, we had to accommodate that um, through the fender lip mouldings, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so we've got these... Uh, 
fin lip moldings added to the vehicle. Um, and then what we've actually done is we've incorporated um, your park distance control sensors and the team's done um, a recalibration of the system to accommodate for the track width increase um, yeah. that we see on the vehicle. So again, you know, we've gone that extra step just to make sure everything on the vehicle is functional. Yeah, it looks fantastic. It looks the part. Um, I think what we might do is, I mean, we might um, open up to questions in a couple of moments time. So if you want to pitch any questions to us, then just type in the comments. I think we might have a couple there already. Thank you very much. All right, you ready for some questions? All right, so Lillian from Parramatta wants to know if you're single. <laughs> so that's the wrong one to start. Lots of comments saying everyone's super impressed with, with how this actual vehicle looks. So Nam says the Ranger is his favorite ute. Here, here, I've got an XL2, so you know, a little bit biased. Um, monotube suspension, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think so. What we'll do when we get to the rear of the car, I think we're going to talk a bit more about the suspension and focus on that a bit more. Yeah. Uh, but to answer your first question, unfortunately, I'm, uh, I'm not single. I'm happily married, <laughs> so uh, thanks. Sorry, Lillian in Parramatta. Um, I've got a couple of mates. I'll put her on too. They'll, they'll take care of that. Now, what colours does this come in? Because this grey is, is, a, is a really nice grey. It looks fantastic on the road. Um, do you have much background on the colours? So obviously, uh, you know, that's probably a question for our, um, for our studio or the marketing team. I'm more on the engineering side. I know it comes in this beautiful uh, grey colour. Um, I think it really looks good on the truck. Uh, but yeah, for, for colours, I think probably visit your nearest dealer or speak to the, the, the marketing team. They'll be able You're to. the man just that makes it drive on the road. Yeah, right? You're right. not the colour department. There's, there's something that looks great about this car. Thanks for that. Um, when you look at it from front on, that width that you're getting with the fenders really adds something to it, doesn't it? It gives it that real yeah, nice look about the track it. width increase, yeah. Um, let's go and have a look at the, the sure. back side of the wheels here. Um, right, so there's some things in here which I know a lot of people have talked about to me on Instagram as well. Can you take us through what's going on uh, on the back wheels? Yeah, so I think this is probably one of the key things on this vehicle we've put a lot of focus on. Um, and to answer one of the questions from one of the viewers early on. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've um, taken out the, the conventional dampers um, that you'd see on a Ranger today, and we've actually fitted this vehicle with uh, two inch monotube Fox dampers, uh, front and rear. So which is one of the questions that was asked earlier. Correct, yeah. So what are Fox shocks then? What are we getting out of those? Uh, so, you know, obviously with the, with the Fox dampers, it's, uh, again, it's just that, you know, th having the, 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 the off-road capability that you get with the monotube damper, better control of, of the wheel over the surfaces, but still having that on-road comfort, which I think, you know, is key in making, in finding that balance in a, in a good um, capable. So it's really just vehicle. tuned then just to hit road or... Yeah, so, yeah, so, so obviously with the dampers, we've got uh, brand new springs front and rear um, and um, we've we've changed the springs to actually give the vehicle um, a ride height increase um, yeah so we've got a ride height increase of about 20 millimeters um, through the suspension and another 10 through through the, the bigger tires we have on the vehicle so you're looking at about a, a ride height increase of about 30 mils yeah. um, on the vehicle um, and one thing we've put a lot of focus on um, is you know obviously finding that combination that balance between the new springs and the dampers or shock absorber, should I say, um, the team's been doing a lot of testing and development work, you know, around Australia. Um, so is there a secret track that you guys go to to have a bit of a drive around? And if so, what's the address? Yeah, so we've got a, we've, we're lucky enough to have a, a facility just other side of, uh, close to Geelong, uh, where we do our, it's our proving ground. Um, really? But then the guys also go out and they go to unique locations around the country that unfortunately we cannot uh, disclose. And we do, um, you know. I'll find out and I'll post it on Insta <laughs> later on. Uh, so, so, but, but the, I guess the message I'm getting behind here is that you, you, you know, the people engineering this and your design teams, they're out there actually testing in the real environment. It's not all very controlled. They like to go and give it a bit of a thrash. Yeah, obviously we have to test the vehicle. Um, I think we had a video on, you know, when the initial announcement came out of some of the locations the guys have been with a vehicle, you know, up in the high country and places like that. Yeah. Obviously to, to make sure, you know, what we're delivering as a 4 by 4 vehicle is you know, is the customer's going to reap the benefits of that. Because I know when you sit inside here, you do feel that right height. It's nice kind of looking down at the Minions, you know, driving in the lower cars and things. Yeah, is, obviously, right. It feels one, good, right. One of the key things um, to give the vehicle more capability, right? Yeah. Um, we might head, actually, around the back of the car and have a look at the, the tray and all that kind of stuff. That's cool with yeah. you. Let's have a wander around. Remember, keep your questions coming in. Put them in the comments. Sorry, Sorry. mate. We'll try and get to as many as we can as well. So, yeah, what's going on here then? So, obviously, you've got this long-legged sports bar, which I particularly like. It kind of looks good. 
Um, talk to me about what's going on here. Yeah, it's just a you know uh, a new bar that we've added to the vehicle again to add to the the bold and the sportiness um, of the vehicle. Um, but I think one of the key things that I that I want to mention is you know part of we were talking about the suspension just now. I think one of the key things standing at the back of the vehicle here is we focused on making sure we carry over um, the current Ranger's towing capability and also uh, payload um, capability. So with this vehicle, um, we've, we've been able to maintain payload at 980 kilograms yeah. and a towing capability of uh, three and a half tons, so 3,500 kilograms. That's pretty substantial, really, because that's I know with the XLTs and with the wild trucks as well, that capability to be able to tow a trailer full of tools and timber stacked on there as well, it's really important for the people that are going to be buying this car as well. So you've not skimped on the power, um, even though you've got all this kind of new off-road system in there as well. Yeah, so that was you know key for us, making sure we can build a capable off-road vehicle, but not sacrifice on the payload and the um, towing capability. And so this, you've got a little towing guide on here as well. Yeah, so what we have on the, on the tow bar is just a bit of indication of you know, what, your, what it's rated to in terms of towing capability and tow ball weight, which is always a good reference for anybody that, you know, if they're not familiar with the, with the vehicle, to have a quick look at instead of having to go to the manual. Yeah, well, we might have a look at some video of the suspension in action here, and we'll make our way to inside the cabin if you want to join me for a little romantic trip to the <laughs> front of the car, right? Sounds good. So I love when you walk down here as well, you just see they've put some really nice little features into the car, like the handles, the black handles as well. Looks fantastic. <sighs> so yeah, it really feels absolutely fantastic, doesn't it, when you're inside here? And yeah. the smell of the new car smell. New car smell, always nice, right? Can never get tired of that. I love it, yeah. It just feels... It's got that kind of luxury feel to it, really, which I really enjoy. Um, so having a look inside here, the first thing I notice is the stuff like all these little clever trimmings, which was a really nice feature of the wild track, which I really love. So I'm glad that that's been encouraged around to here. What are we seeing inside the cabin that stands out for you? Yeah, so obviously with this this vehicle that's unique, um, you know, we've got these brand new seats in the vehicle um, that's got the leather inserts in the, in the seat. And, and you'll see in the backrest here, you've got the nice FX4 Max embroidered yeah. logo. It looks awesome, doesn't it? Like it a does. Transformer. Yeah, it does really, does really look nice. Um, and the seats are really comfortable. We've also um, added uh, some sports pedals um, to yeah. match the seats. And then something I don't know if you've noticed is the is the up for, up for the switches you see on the top here. So these are auxiliary switches. So for people that don't know what it is, like me maybe, what do these do? Do they do anything in particular? So um, this allows you to go and fit accessories to your vehicle in terms of maybe a winch or a, a light bar or spotlights or you know even connect lights to the back of your your vehicle. Um, if you have a canopy or whatever for, for camping trips. So, yeah. so this is all wired into the vehicle's harness and easy locate uh, points to you. So what you a great idea. You know, when you do this sort of stuff aftermarket, you know, you have to have all this put in extra. So this would be fantastic to put maybe a bit of a louder horn. I mean, who doesn't like a bigger horn there, <laughs> Martin, you know? You can, uh, whatever, whatever you want whatever to Whatever floats my boat. Yeah, whatever floats your boat, yep. I love it. Yeah, but there's lots of little things I'm noticing here which really just stands out as luxurious but strong as well you know yep. it feels really great we might take a couple more questions if that's all right because i think they are coming in thick and fast thank you very much i've got my glamorous assistant on my <laughs> ipad see ya all righty so <laughs> where are my boots from walter uh that's probably my mum watching at the moment <laughs> they are little numbers uh from ringers western thank you for that all right does the tray have factory fitted tub cover and liner so um We'll get around to the back of the vehicle, but I'll, I'll jump into that. So um, it doesn't have a cover. Um, it comes with, like we said, the extended the liner. Uh, uh, sports bar. And then inside the tub, you've got the, the pretty robust plastic liner um, yeah. as standard um, to the vehicle, correct? So go back to the Fox shocks. So a couple of people wanting to know, are they same as the ones that are inside the Raptor? Uh, that's, that's a good point. So um, it's, it can get quite technical, but I'll try and give a, a brief explanation. So the dampers, we, the shock absorbers we see in the Raptor um, versus the sh shock absorbers we see in the FX4 Max is not the same. Um, the, the Raptor's got a two and a half inch, so slightly bigger, but it's also um, a posi position, position sensitive damper. Um, so the Fox dampers in the, in the Raptor is more built for high speed off-road capability, uh, where, the, where these monotube dampers are you know, more focused on um, more, like the slower 
off-road kind of terrain um, tuned for that environment and also ha having that balance for on-road comfort. So they're not 100% um, the same, obviously from the same family. Yeah. Um, but So to paraphrase, no. Um, correct. <laughs> but they're designed for this vehicle and they're designed to take straight off-road. Right? Yes, so correct. Okay. And again, you know, again, like I mentioned, you know, this vehicle was, we didn't want to compromise on the payload and the towing capability. Yeah. Um, so that's why we, we selected those dampers. Okay. Um, and we can talk about this probably when we go around the front again, but uh, the approach angle um, is that greater than a regular Ranger? Because you know, the approach angle, I guess, for, for people that may not know, it's, it's, it's how you can approach this uh, an incline or a decline or go over something. It's the way yeah. you've engineered the vehicle. You were telling me earlier that this is it, it's, it's a bit extra than, for example, the XLT. Yeah. So what? So obviously the main key things we tend to focus on is um, approach, departure, and ramp over ankle. Yeah. Um, and obviously due to the fact that, like I've mentioned, we've got increased ride height on the vehicle, um, that automatically you know improves your approach, departure, and ramp over angle. So. So don't quote me on the numbers, but I think it's probably in, <laughs> the, in the in the You're range the of about three three degrees improvement on the approach. Okay. Um, I'm not sure about the Which rest. Which doesn't sound a lot, but actually it is. It's quite substantial. Yeah, it's pretty. It? It's pretty substantial. Um, and you'll notice that when you actually take the vehicle off road. Yeah. Um, it's got definitely more capability in that regard. Let's talk about your eight inches, the screen. This is all carryover from the XLT in the Ranger, which I love. What are we seeing on the dashboard and uh, this cabin area that's something that stands out for Yeah, you? so uh, obviously, uh, like you said, carry over from current Ranger today. We've got our 18-inch um, screen here, um, infotainment system um, that's got that's audio control. So yeah. you can... So you I love this. So you can sit here and um, when you're driving, you can just not take rides off the road, but you can change the track. You can do it in pieces, can't you? Yeah, and you can actually, you can talk to the truck and, um, you know, ask to send your mama a text message and speak to the truck and then it'll send a text message to your mom or your So, because that will link with an Android or an Apple Yes, yeah, so I was going to get to that. So, that, so the system, the Sync 3 system also interacts with um, Apple Play, Apple CarPlay or um, Google um, Auto. You know, it's really good for dictating something like, like you say, press and hold. You say, hey, send Martin a message. Here we go. Send Martin a message. But it won't do because I don't know who you are. Um, and then it will say, yeah, what do you want to do? And say, meet me at the pub at 5.30 after the broadcast <laughs> for a beer. And it will send it out and type it for you, which is really great because you should never be touching your phone at all when you're driving. So it's some good additions. Yeah, yeah really nice. What's all in here? Uh, so it's just, um, end of the day, we, we also have a sat-nav system that's sort of incorporated. And then we've got all our electronic, um, you know, safety features, EBB, things like that. Um, that's also standard on, on, on yeah. some of the, the current range of vehicles. Um, also if, available. Have you got a sunglasses holder? Because obviously it's important things I need to point out. Oh yeah, we have. Mirror in the driver's side, let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, looking good. I can see a cameraman in the window there. Oh, that's very good. It's a really nice, it's a really nice cabin, mate. It's really, really nice. And of course it's beautiful. It almost looks like sports layout for the dashboard, doesn't it? Yep, correct. Which is great. Um, well, we might look at some footage of this car um, with its bi-turbo and its power in action. What are these little buttons for here, mate? So, yeah, so um, so obviously the six gang switch you see here in the center console, um, that is pretty much helps you with some of the some of the off-road features the vehicle has as well. It's got traction control that you can switch off. Um, we've got heel descent control on there. We've got uh, rear diff lock um, that comes standard on a vehicle. Yeah. Um, so again, all features that just help, you know, that's standard on current Ranger today, but yeah. it also makes you know, helps with the increased uh, off-road capability yeah. on the vehicle. Oh, it's done a great job. I can tell you're passionate about this. Should we go out and have a look at the front of the vehicle, lift up the bonnet and see what's inside? Because I've got a couple of questions for you as well while we uh, check out this bi-turbo and the power. Have a look. Yeah, let's do it. So I love, in particular, the design of the handles. Everything just feels so um, sleek yep. and designer. Something you had something to do with as well. An engineer's point of view is a more design point. Of view? Oh, this is more design. Um, you know, I'm yeah, probably design input from the from the design team. Um, I'm not the expert in that segment. I'm obviously just an engineer. Well, so. well as uh, romantic as this is with you and me in the front <laughs> cabin, mate, this is where you take all your first dates. I bet it is. We'll go out the front, have lift up the bonnet, have a quick look. Well, let's look at the engine. There we go. <laughs> now, I am not a petrol head or a diesel head by any means. But there's a lot of stuff that's gone into this engine, which I guess we can talk about now. I've got to be honest with you, you know when, when, you, when you say you, you drive a Ranger and you talk about bi-turbo, a lot of people 
ask me what the bi turbo means, and I actually don't know how to answer them honestly. And they talk about the size of the engine as well, you know, is it a guzzling six litre or whatever, but can you explain actually what is bi turbo? So what we have um, on this specific um, engine is the, is the two litre bi turbo. Um, and the reason we, we've got this, this engine in the vehicle is obviously it delivers the power we want, right, first of all, and then also the economy. Fuel economy is a key thing. So that's what the bi part is. So it's fuel economy and power. Well, it's, it's how it delivers it, right? So the bi turbo is meaning, pretty much means it's got two turbos. Um, you've got a small turbo that sort of accelerates the engine up from standstill. And once you start hitting the highway um, at higher speeds, that's when the bigger turbo has a bigger role to play. Um, and, and that's matched to obviously a 10 speed automatic transmission. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, this powertrain or the engine we see here is, has been in the market now for three years and it's, and it's a well proven engine. And something, and something that I, sorry, it's for um, interrupting. So, and one thing I'm also, you know, I drive a bi turbo on a daily basis. Same. And I'm, I tow my caravan and I just, you know, drive my vehicle off road just, and I just love it. I, yeah. I, yeah, really ten, love the bike. Ten, the 10-speed ten auto is, is a really nice feature when you're driving, isn't it? So I'm glad that you've carried that over from the XLTs and the wild tracks as well. Yeah. Because, you know, with a vehicle, vehicle this powerful, it, you can lose some of those features. So what litres then are we talking? Uh, so you're looking at a two-litre powertrain, as I said. Um, and I think, so from a power perspective, you're looking at 157 kilowatts. Yeah. Um, 500 newton meters of torque. Yeah. Um, and like you said, you know, the transmission allows you to have the vehicle in the right gear for the for the road conditions. So it, whether you're going on a on a gradient or whatever, yeah. the, the vehicle will always select the right gear for you to be in to be to yeah. deliver the most power and to be as efficient um, from a fuel economy. So I can safely uh, set off and beat someone who's a little bit slow and the red light and get in front of them. So, um, yeah, I think I like that. We might take some more questions, I think, if that's all right. We'll get yeah. a little cue that we have a few more questions. There's lots of questions here coming through. A couple of ones would have mentioned, were quite mentionable, but I won't, I won't bring them up for you, mate. Now, can you fit a roller cover to the tray with a sports bar still on? That's probably a question I need to go back to the team on. Um, oh, you've got him. Good one. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I would assume you would be able to have a, probably fit something like a tonneau cover to the, to the yeah. vehicle with the, with, the, with the extended sports bar. Um, I know we have that as a standard feature on, on the shorter uh, leg one, but not 100% sure. But I'm sure the team will get back to you. Is the cab the same size as the rest of the FX4 line? Um, so if we say FX4, I would say that the, we haven't changed anything um, in terms of the, the cab size or the load box size um, compared to current Ranger uh, that you see in the market. So it's pretty much from an upper body perspective, um, you know, up cab, load box, yeah. exactly the same as what we, ha what we see on our current Rangers today. Fair enough. Um, is there a bull bar available? Um, so we don't... Um, so there's a vehicle stand here. It um, does. It doesn't have a standard fit, fitted bull bar um, to the vehicle, um, and the reason we don't do that is because we have to meet the safety, the crash safety requirements. Yeah. Um, and having a bull bar on the vehicle, you know, prevents us from meeting those specific requirements. Because people don't realise that, you know, everyone will say, "Oh, why hasn't it got this? Why hasn't it got that?" You know, well, you have certain standards of safety you have to meet, and that's compromised by putting all these bits and pieces on, which may not. It might, you know, reduce your category of safety and things. So correct, because uh, it's a safety. Was it a, a what was a star rating you said? Ah, so I mean, you, we we've got an NCAP five star rating on the vehicle, yeah. um, but there is certain requirements today in the market that doesn't allow us to sell a product if it doesn't meet a safety certain sa safety ratings. Fair enough. Uh, does it have the park assist and adaptive cruise control, which I know my XLT does, and it's a bit of a godsend, you know, the uh, park assist. So it's got active uh, cruise control um, and uh, park assist. I think it should have park assist. So whatever it's in the in the base XLT, you've got it in here. It should be in this vehicle as well. Uh, so many questions coming in. Keep them coming in, guys. Thank you so much. Um, is there an auxiliary battery installed? Uh, we don't have an auxiliary battery installed as, as standard. Um, yep. I think that's again something that you know uh, the customers would be able to retrofit. Does it have a full size spare wheel and what type of jack? It does have a full-size spare wheel, um, as what I've showed you uh, with yeah. the with the uh, BFG tires um, and the grey alloy. Are you feeling um, grilled yet? Are we grilling you enough? Um, I'm getting. I'm feeling a bit of heat yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got a couple more for and you. Then, and then the jack is uh, obviously the standard uh, jack that you would see on a 
a current Ranger today. Um, what um, what size are the tires? We, just, we went, went through that, didn't we? They were so it's a, it's a it's a it's a roughly a thirty one and a yeah. half inch uh, tire. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that is specific, uh, but it's roughly thirty one and a half inch, so about an inch bigger than what you'd see on a on a standard Ranger. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's plenty of questions. Um, also, stuff. What does any other safety tech come with it as well? Um, so there's no additional other safety tech other than what you would get on your standard Ranger today. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Some good questions there, mate. I'll hand that back. Keep your questions coming in. Just type them into the comments box and we'll try and get through as many as we can. We will pop this back down, I reckon. Yep. And head round to the side steps and have a look here. So this is something that stood out for me straight away when I first laid eyes on this car. Um, well, the side steps, I mean, it looks, it looks very different. It kind of looks cool, I reckon. Yeah, so... Um what we've done is we've, um, we've removed uh, the, the plastic um, blow molded part that we see that we normally have on a standard and Ranger. It's not, it's not a full length one, is it, either as well? No. So obviously we had to put the, the, this foot, foot rest there due to the increased ride height um, to make it um, easy for people to in, get in and out of the vehicle. Um, but what we've then done is we've, we've part of the structure, we've padded, put a really solid um, uh, bar on the on the bottom here, um, and that, what's that for? And that just allows when you actually go off road, um, it it would protect um, your sill and your cab of the vehicle. Okay. Um, so it's obviously not a full rated rock slider, um, yeah. as you would see in the aftermarket. Uh, but it's it's really a, a, a significant up in improvement from what we have on on the current Ranger. Today. Yeah, it looks fantastic as well. You know, like it it just looks it looks the bomb. Yeah, you know, I think it makes it look sporty, but it makes it look kind of pretty rugged as well. Um, I just want to ask you about the all-weather carpets inside as well. Yeah. We can have a quick look inside. So this is actually one of the, the things that I also really like about the vehicle. I this mean, is one of your little uh, add-ons, is it? Oh, no, it's, you know, it's a team, but I just I like the feature because it's um, it's all-weather carpet. And, you know, when you when you obviously take the vehicle off-road, you're jumping in and out of the truck all the time or the, the car, um, you know, with your dirty feet. You get home, you just take these carpets out, throw them on the floor, give them a a high pressure clean, yeah. uh, wait for them to dry and chuck them back in the truck. Beautiful. And they, they really sit well in the, in the footwells as well. Yeah, they are good. I mean, being a chippy, you know, you, you're, you're turning all sorts of stuff all day. You bring it inside, you get stuck to the, the carpety ones. Yes. Other than the plastic ones, you take them inside the house, you get yeah. yelled at the whole lot. So that's a good little safety device. Can we just go and have a look at the tray one more time? Yeah. You might get a bit dizzy from doing circles here, but come along. Keep your questions coming in too, guys. All right, so let's have a little look in here so if we pull this down um, talk to me about what's going on here so tie down points yeah so what we've done is on the on in the load box here we've um, we've got these tie down points um, again standard what we have on the, the Ranger today um, we've got four of them inside the tray um, and this just allows you to you know tie anything down like motorbikes or whatever if you're carrying stuff on the back putting nets over and yeah. just tying it down to these. Because I know in these states points. like Queensland and New South Wales, it's compulsory to have a net if you've got anything in the back Correct, tile yeah. and everything. Yeah. So that's a really handy little feature to have, yeah. isn't it? Um, just, I just got feedback from uh, one of the producers. We can actually fit a tourney cover with these long-legged sports bars. Oh, good. So I hope that answers the question for one of the viewers. Yeah, good. I think you should take my job, mate, and just <laughs> go on your own. Um, I feel like the tray is, is pretty light. The no, tailgate, like, yep. like to touch. I mean, it's 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 thick and heavy, but it's light to operate. You know, is that for a particular reason? Yeah. So obviously, um, like you said, it's normally uh, a fairly heavy part. Um, but what we've done is we've actually added a um, a spring on the inside here. Yeah. Um, and that just allows exactly for that. You know, easy uh, easy opening, easy closing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Pretty nice feature, I reckon. That's good. So it's well thought out, isn't it? It's well thought through. Yep. Um, don't forget the competition. At the end of this broadcast, we are giving away a $250 voucher to BCF. All you have to do is answer one of the questions we're going to pitch to you at the end. And we've already given away the clues. So I hope you are listening. Can we head down to the front again? Because I want to talk technology. Because little birdie tells me that there's actually an app now that comes, that attaches to this car. What on earth can you do with an app? Can you drive it, you know, drive yourself to work? Yeah, so obviously um, on this truck, we've got a, a standard fitted um, embedded modem. Um, a modem? Modem. As in like an internet modem. So I can yes, like, correct. Use, get on Tinder if there's no reception <laughs> so what, the bush. So what it allows you to do, it allows you to connect the vehicle. Uh, so for instance, this vehicle to your actual phone. Um, is and that it, right? And if you have the Ford app on your phone, 
you can um, remotely, um, either being in Queensland or wherever, um, in the other side of the world, LA. Um, lock the vehicle, unlock the vehicle, um, do a remote start if you want to get the vehicle um, you know, warm um, yeah. on those cold winter mornings. And then it also allows you to um, check things like your tire pressure, your fuel levels, um, and really? you can actually even track your vehicle to see where the location of the vehicle is. What about if you know, you're know you overseas somewhere and um, you're someone's trying to break in, the alarm's going off? What, what yeah, you'll get a there? notification through the app um, that will tell you that the alarm's been activated and maybe you can get the neighbours to go and stick their head over the wall How and see if... How uh, crazy is the technology? Yeah. Your eyes have lit up on this one. This is something that you really love, isn't it? Can I ask you what you've named this car? Because you have to give your car a name, <laughs> don't you, when you register the app. What's it called? Can we tell everyone at home? Uh, so me and Walt had a bit of a discussion and we called it Walt the Beast. I was not part of this. He's just obviously recognised my natural abilities and, and threw it in. Um, do you mind taking some more questions? I think they're coming no, no, thick sure. and fast. I'll just grab that. Thank you so much. Cheers. All right. How are the tyres in wet conditions? I mean, they kind of speak for themselves a bit, but yeah, how do they go in wet conditions? Yeah, so obviously off-road, you know, um, I think it's not a, it's not a, you know, a mud terrain tyre, but I, I believe from a, from a, from an off-road perspective, it's an all-terrain tyre, so it's yeah. pretty capable off-road. Um, and then on-road, um, you know, I think they, they are fairly, fairly good. Obviously, not as good as a road bias tyre that yeah. you would tend to see that that's got a much uh, lower um, uh, compound um, hot, sure hardness, I would say. Um, but obviously, the, the balance. You know, BFG's done a lot of work around these tyres. and I mean, the reality the is, balance. if you're a really serious off-roader that wants a rig, I mean, you're going to do some aftermarket stuff, aren't you, yourself? But in terms of driving a vehicle out of this showroom and hitting the road, I mean, you set up with those tyres, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, this, uh, to be honest with you, as the truck stands here, I think, you know, you're ready to chuck a bag on the back and a, and a, yeah. you know, a tent and an and esky and uh, head out to the, go and do a, do a trip through the, through the, the outback. What would you have in your esky? Bit of water. Oh yeah, of course you would. Water. Bit of milk. My ass. All right. Do you still have to drill holes with the upfitter switch pack, or can I connect my lights directly? No, you should be able to connect your lights directly to Good. the contact point um, under the hood. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Okay. What's the constant load rating on the rear springs? You're really testing him now. There's some good questions coming through. Uh, to be honest with you, I'll have to get back to the <laughs> Dynamics guys on that one. That's not, well that's not a number that I know off the top yeah. of my head. Um, okay, that's but good. the Dynamics guys, I'm sure we'll get that answer for you guys. And get he back said to if he one. couldn't answer a question, he gets me a slab. So that's two slabs now, so we're on to it. Is the FX4 Max a special edition limited run, or is it a full model going forward? Thank you. Um, so I believe for now it's, it's a limited um, amount of vehicles that's being manufactured. Don't quote me on the number, I don't know. Um, and I, yeah, so it's, it's a limited number. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm understood. Yeah, limited number. And you know, there's lots of delays in manufacturing because of COVID all around the world. I mean, anything, a couch takes a bit of time now to get. Yeah, so, so I think the first- Something that's popping up a fair bit, if we're honest. Yeah, so I think the first, uh, first FX4 Max vehicles have received the dealers and I think some customers have already received um, delivery of the vehicles. Yeah, so, so um, it's happening. It's happening, the vehicles it's are out happening. there. Yeah. Exciting to see them on the road. Yeah, well mate, I think we're just about done here, but I appreciate your time showing us around the vehicle. It's always amazing to meet the people who engineer vehicles like this, because I mean, when do you get the chance to do that? So thanks for your time today. I know you're passionate about it. It is a really nice car. It's not until you sit inside this vehicle, take it for a test drive, you feel the way everything's designed and engineered, you feel the power. It has got guts and it can go, and the towing capacity, what's three and a half ton, is exceptional, isn't it? So well done, mate, I hope you're proud. Yeah, I, I'm, well, I'm very proud and I think the team, you know, um, is also very proud of the vehicle and I, I believe I speak on their behalf as well. And yeah, no, it's been, uh, it's been awesome being here and yeah. being able to take some of the questions, even though uh, some of them stumped <laughs> me. Um, but, you know, at least talk through, you know, some of the capability of the vehicle and, and helping people understand that this vehicle is actually, um, uh, you know, a truly uh, very off, uh, capable off-road machine. Um, it's a beautiful car. It yeah. really is a beautiful car. Um, you know... The, the, the big thing that comes out for me from a lot of people asking a car like this when you look at it is the price point because, you know, people are saying, what, we're going to pay 85 grand, are we, for an off-road ute? But actually, it's 67,990 drive, drive away. away, which I think is an incredible price point for a car that looks and behaves like this. So, I mean, it's a massive achievement, right? Yeah, and, I, and to add to that, right, you... You know, I think the vehicle, you're looking at the vehicle and, you know, telling you the background of the vehicle, it's been tuned, 
you know, with, with everything you see on the vehicle, with these tires, with these suspension, by our engineers. So that means you don't really lose your warranty when you drive it out here. So yeah. it's a capable off-road machine yeah. and you don't compromise on your warranty. Which so you I know, like normally it says don't ever drive an unsealed road or something like this. You kind of like say, get out there. And it's a five-year warranty as well. And I think the first standard servicing fee is, well, it's 299 for the first four years. So it's all pretty good value to money. In fact, it's exceptional value for money made, I reckon, isn't it? test drive it, you will fall in love with it. All right, it is time to pitch the question for the BCF voucher for $250. The question is, and I hope you are listening, what accessories would you connect to that auxiliary switch pack? So be creative here, right? We're judging on creativity. creativity. So tell us what you would put on there. Could be winches, could be uh, Martin's big horn, it could be anything you wanna put on there. Put that into the comments and we'll pick a winner based on creativity very soon. Well, that's it, mate. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you all. Um, for your chance to find out more about this vehicle and the entire Ranger range, jump onto ford.com.au. And that's it from us. Until the next time, take care. Bye for now.